Hello, welcome to the Astronomy NAS channel. I am Fab. In our last video, I used the Sky Rover 72 Super ED with the Player One's Uranus C Pro to photograph the Dune Bell Nebula. As I mentioned before, this setup was designed to photograph planetary nebula and smaller galaxies. But as the definition and detail of the images were excellent, the curiosity to test it on a massive nebula was greater. This video is nothing more than a second evaluation of the capabilities of the Uranus C Pro when combined with a small apochromatic refractor. I changed many of my workflow habits, such as my acquisition routine and the way I process the images. I usually waited for the moment where I would get maximum exposure time on the same target each night, about 4 straight hours, just as they were crossing the zenith at around 9 pm. This way I would be able to stay awake without any problems and work several nights in a row. The problem is that in order to meet all these requirements in the Orion region, for example, the work has to be held during the January, exactly the rainiest month here in Brazil. With the use of the Star Adventure GTI and Nina, I changed this routine and avoided the rainy season issues. I started my acquisitions of the Orion and Horsehead Nebula at the beginning of September. This was possible thanks to the automation offered by a go-to mount, combined with the Nina's programming features. My workflow now boils down to programming a target for the beginning of the night and another for the beginning of the morning. Just checking if the cloudiness has increased, if the meridional flip and the new target searcher went well. This way I could manage several nights of work, on two simultaneous targets, more spaced between them, and avoided the look factor containing the end of the year reader. Most of the time I was able to get as much acquisition time as possible by photographing two targets on the same night, working from 8 pm to 4 am. Or better yet, letting the Star Adventure GTI work overnight while I slept. very complicated period for us habitants of subtropical regions, as late afternoon and early evening storms almost always bring a lot of cloudiness and humidity, which remain throughout the night and early morning. Unfortunately, this is the ideal time to photograph the Orion and Horsehead Nebulae. I have a red photograph the two nebula in 2023 using the Sky Rover 60 Super ED and the ASI 183 MC Pro. But this year I not only try to get the best image possible, but also the greatest amount of perspectives on both objects. If you haven't seen these videos, click on the cards that will appear in the corner of your screen. There you have all the information about these two iconic objects. I know. It may seem lazy to leave the equipment work and go to sleep, but for those who know my work, you know what free time and clean nights mean. I confess there is great to be able to rest and know the Star Adventure GTI will make the flips, target searchings and park itself at the end of the night. But this leaves me free to set up a second or third equipment and get a new perspectives on the same or another target. And there is exactly what I did. One of my passions is wide field astrophotography, as it reveals details that a more restricted field of view does not allow. While the Sky Rover 72 Super ED and the Uranus C Pro were operated by Star Adventure GTI, 
I took the time to work with the Ascar FMA 180 and the ASI 533MC Pro mounted on the Star Adventure 2i and get a second perspective on my target. Another habit that I changed was in relation to the amount and quality of the light frame is used to compose the final images. With more of them available, I start to discard any imperfections that could harm the overall quality of the images. To demonstrate how this change positively affected the workflow, not the jumping light frames obtained, discarded and stacked to form the final images of the Sky Rover 72 Super ED with the Rano C Pro. For the horse head nebula, I captured 294 2 minute light frames over 6 nights and select only the best 290. In this case, only 4 light frames were discarded as the nights I work in the horse head nebula, the work quality and transparency were exceptional. It was also necessary to create a small mosaic to be able to frame the flame nebula in the same apparent field of view, which is my preferred perspective for this target. As I only need a small strip to complete the framing, I did not use the Microsoft ICE to create the mosaic this time. I just used the mosaic option in the DSS stacking. There were 189 light frames for the upper portion and another 105 for the lower portion, totaling 90 hours and 40 minutes of total integration. For the Orion Nebula, I captured 522 minute light frames over 10 nights and selected only the 405 best. Yes, there were 115 discards due to the cloudiness, satellite risks and two clear sky backgrounds. I stacked 382 minute light frames using the Antilly RGB Ultra filter, plus 97 using the ZWO dual band filter, totaling 13 hours and 30 minutes of total exposure. While the Star Adventure GTI run the scheduler program at Antonina, I got the time to work with the Ascar FMA 180 and the ASI 533MC Pro on the same targets. As the equipment's field of view is much wider, my objective was not to obtain extremely detailed images of the two nebulae. Therefore, it was not necessary to achieve a very long total integration time. To obtain the image of the horse head nebulae, 102 minute light frames were used, totaling 3 hours and 20 minutes of total integration. For the Orion nebulae, I got 55 2 minute light frames totaling 1 hour and 50 minutes of total integration. Not being afraid to change the old habits can yield excellent results, which can lead not only to see better what we photograph, but also seeing more and from new perspectives. I hope this small report of changing habits I went through is useful to you. I wish you all clear skies and see you soon.